Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Good Wednesday morning. Welcome to Run It Back right here on FanDuel TV. I will do the intros now as we've got lots to get to and two great guests coming up. Stadium insider Sham Sharania. My name is Michelle Chandler. Lou Will on the end. And um, we finally had some hoops last night. But before we can get to that, you know what's fun is when Chuck and the boys make fun of you. And that's exactly what happened last night, Shams. Uh, let's take a listen. Sham Sharania reporting that Zion is believed to have suffered a left hamstring injury, uh, sources telling The Athletic, um, had that 40 and 11. How can we believe him? His name is Shams. Shams. That's actually one of your better ones. I mean, it's a fair question. How would you like to uh, answer that? How can we believe you? I mean, you know, you, you have you have a lot of pronunciations of your name. I'll, you know, I, I, I've, I've come to accept them. My name is Shams, though, but Shams. we do respect, we do respect Charles Barkley in the inside of the NBA. We, 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 this is the gold standard. Yeah. This is the greatest. You know you're doing Pikachu something right if they're making fun of you on national. Yeah, TV. exactly. You have. Shams. I would say you've made it, thank but you, you've been thank making it. Thank you, Chandler. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shams and Shams. Um, all right, so the games last night, uh, oof, let's just go ahead and get into it. Warriors, Kings, we'll do that one first. Kings eliminate the Warriors. They did it, and it was not close. Uh, Ten seeds are now 0-7 in the play-in. Keegan Murray had a night, 32 points. He was 8 of 13 from three. Klay Thompson is the one we're going to start, though, because zero points, 0 for 10, uh, 0 for 6 from three. First game without a made field goal. This is not when you want to do it. Since his rookie season and afterwards, Steve Kerr said that they, they need him back. Um, this is obviously now the beginning of what happens to Klay Thompson. So what are we hearing? Klay Thompson is very open to seeing his marketplace in free agency. We've discussed it. We've talked about it. The Warriors offered him an extension before the season, two years, $48 million. He declined it. He believes at that point, and I think still as the years have gone, gone on, that he is worth more, deserves more. I'm told his free agency is going to be about respect. It's going to be about principle as far as where he stands in that war Warriors organization for championships. He's come back from an ACL injury. Mm -hmm. He's come back from an Achilles injury. And because of what he's done, feeling like he's deserving, um, and and he's he has a lot of thinking to do this summer. He's gonna have interest in the marketplace. Like there's gonna be teams that gonna, are gonna want Clay Thompson. <laughs> you look at his second half of the season though: 19 points a game, 45% yeah. from the field, uh, almost 42% from three-point range. It's gonna be the hardest call in his life to make if he does end up finding another spot to leave. As far as calling Steph Curry, calling Draymond Green, <clears throat> calling them, and saying I'm gone. But he is going to be open to testing the market. This is going to be tell you weird, something. man. Free agency usually comes down to one thing and one thing only, Shams. It's not respect. It's not. It's, it's money. Money. And he, and he maybe he thinks he deserves well, more money than the, than the franchise thinks he does. And he did show flashes this year that he still can I play. Know. He still can explode and have big games. He's healthy. And to go through the injuries and the recovery that he has gone through to get back to this level is super impressive. So I do think there's a smaller market team out there that is going to throw him a lot more money than Mike Dunleavy. And the Warriors are prepared to do so. I is he do. regretting turning down that 248? Uh, I don't think so because I think he will end up getting more than really? that or a longer deal this summer. I, I really do, and I think he deserves that. He's a huge name. He's going to bring in a lot of different to a team like Orlando, for example. I know we keep talking about that. <laughs> that is exactly what that franchise needs. They're a team on the rise. He's a great locker room guy. He's a great vet. He provides them shooting that they just have never had. Hmm. Um, so I do love it, and I hate that we're even open up with his bad game because this is one it game of his entire awful. legendary. He, he, he had a big career. time second half of the season. He did. So he's put himself in position to go and and again, this is respect with him and his team, his franchise. It would be very weird to see him on another team because it just wouldn't. It's, he's one of those guys that it makes sense that he finished his career. Yeah. But at the end of the day, players have a short window to make the most money possible. Let's be honest. And and he has that opportunity now to go and get another bag. Go get it. If the Warriors don't want to pony up. Uh, it just it. It was hard to watch last night, and we're gonna, we'll are gonna we talk about this game, obviously, a lot, but it was just the clay part of it, the, the body language, the moment you realize they knew that this was done. Like, I don't know. If you're if you're Clay Thompson, do you really want to leave Golden State? Or do you need the fresh start? Maybe it's a need thing at this point, Lou. Yeah, I, I think he's going to take a look um, this offseason and really, really have a, 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 a... Like, this looks like the end. Like how he's, <laughs> Of course uh, it looks like the yeah, end. Yeah, how he's soaking everything in. Like, he, I think he understands that this may be an end of an era and he's going to have to weigh his options. You know, it's either going to come down, um, in my opinion, it's going to come down to a, a pay cut. It's going to be a deal that, that probably 
um, wasn't there for him at the beginning of the season at a, at a lower number, or he's going to go get the money somewhere else. I hate to I hate to see this team, um, this dynasty come to an end in, in such a fashion for Clay, um, with the things that he's been able to accomplish with this group. But you know, I, I think he has his future is somewhere else. And it's yeah. interesting because he's. Con- be a free agent, and he can go and get a bag somewhere else. But they also can move some other. They also can try sure. and get off Draymond. They also Chris Paul is probably coming to an end soon. So there's also there's other ways they could do to keep him, while making it kind of mutually beneficial for both him and the franchise. I wonder if we could give uh, Steph true serum what what he would want. They, look, they missed the playoffs for the third time in the Steve Kerr era, and afterwards Steve Kerr talked a lot about it. Said you you don't get to stay on top forever. It sounded like. He's sort of conceding that this dynastic run that they were on, Lou, is officially over. Did you get that vibe? Yeah, it's 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 over. But nothing short of spectacular. You know, mm-hmm. these guys put put numbers on the board. They changed the game um, during that run. Steph Curry became one of the most fascinating players in, <laughs> in basketball. Became one of the greats. They were able to put four championship banners in the Raptors. Nothing short of, ama- of amazing for this for this group. Everything comes to an end, and I think this is time. Yeah, I don't think he's conceding it, but you look at every franchise that had historic runs, or the Celtics, the Bulls, the Lakers, they all at some point. When the Spurs point, lost to Memphis, that was yeah, felt like Yeah, at it was some over. point it all comes to an end. I don't think that's him throwing in the towel. I do think they've done a great job this year. The beginning of the season, I tell you, ah, their future, once this time, kind of Trace Jackson and Pods, you know what I mean? I didn't know. How dare you. All those guys <gasps> have become... Yeah, this is, I love this. I love the pettiness. But all those guys, those young guys have developed, so they're going to have a lot of decisions to make this year, but (laughs) they're not just going to go into rebuilding. They still have Steph Curry, who's playing at elite level, and they still have those three or four young guys that have proved themselves that they can play in this league and be very productive. What the heck was Nurkic What does Nurkic got to do with this? You know, Nurkic and Draymond Well, you know, him and Draymond. They got the whole beef. back and forth. It is funny, though. He's been sitting on that. Draymond's living rent-free in his head. (laughs) It's also crazy because he's getting ready for the playoffs, too. He is, too. He's so stoked that they're out. (laughs) I wouldn't have done that. Um, Yeah, like, there's a lot in the air with this team, Shams. There is a lot. Stephen Curry, Draymond Green, we know they're going to be back. They're going to be a part of the core. Hmm. Draymond Green's still under contract for three more years after this season. I mean, unless there's a massive change. He... They're still building around those two guys. Steve Kerr's obviously extended, locked in. Klay Thompson, if he's going to come back, he's part of that core too. But beyond that, it's the young guys, right? It's Jonathan Kaminga, it's Brandon Podzemski, and Trace Jackson Davis. And I think everyone else on the roster, I mean, is going to be up in the air. You think about Chris Paul. He's got a non-guaranteed contract for about $30 million next season. Could he be used in a potential trade? You think about the money that you need to go get a star Mm. player out there, you need significant salary. Andrew Wiggins, they explored Andrew Wiggins' trades Mm. heavy at the trade deadline. I would expect him to be a name to be talked about, too. Those two guys are really the only options you have to really improve this roster at a high, high level. But they're going to have to lean into their young guys. And Jonathan Kaminga, we saw the second half that he had, 17 points a game, five rebounds, three assists, uh, great splits from the field. He's a guy that they're going to need to take the next step. Is it because those three young guys are so good that we don't even mention Moses Moody anymore when we're talking about their young guys? It's because Trace Jackson, Pazinski, and, and you know, I mean, Kaminga, those are the guys. Because he played great last yeah, night. Yeah, he, he, he showed right. flashes as well. That's what I'm saying. So this isn't like a fire sale, everything. You know, they still have assets, and they still have Steph Curry. They still have Draymond Green coming back. So, but they have big decisions. How do they get off Wiggins? What are they going to do with Chris Paul? What are they going to do with Klay Thompson? And then they're still going to be right there next year if they do make the proper moves. Do you think that the fact that they've been so loyal, and I get it, and we all sort of feel it as fans, like just even talking about Klay Thompson leaving feels weird, but they were loyal to Klay, they were loyal to Draymond. Do you think they wasted time that could have been used building again around Steph? Yeah, possibly, especially if Clay ends up leaving and then they end up shipping mm. Draymond somewhere. Then, yeah, there's always that doubt. There's always that, did we make the right move? But when you have an historic run like the Warriors did and you change the game and you won at such an elite level, you have to show respect. It's weird to me to think that Clay Thompson's going to go play on the Magic for two years then go back to Golden State and be like the president of basketball when he retires. <laughs> like, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't check out. He's a warrior. He's weird. there. For, you see what I mean? So I think, I think they should do right by him. But, again, who knows? He's got every right to go and to, to you know, see his options. In keeping with the theme all season long of the disrespect that the Kings have felt, we're just going to mention that they did win the game, and we're going to move on to the next topic. Uh, Lakers. Isn't that crazy? They played unbelievable last night. We didn't. They really did. did. They they crushed Um, this game for a minute. There, thought it was getting out of hand, and then we had a game. Uh, But the Lakers do win 110-106. The seven seed is theirs. Three and zero in playing games. They they love it. Zion though, big story of the night. He had 40, 11 rebounds, five assists, um, and then did end up leaving. We'll get to that in a second, but. LeBron and AD, uh, 12 for 36 from the field, and they get a win. Shocking? 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good sign. This team has been constructed pretty deep, pretty balanced. And when you see and you look at them, 6 of 20 from the field for LeBron and 6 of 16, and they still find a way. They go up big. They went on huge runs, and they did, the game mm -hmm. did get really close there at the end. But this is the balanced attack that we were talking about. We need to see D'Angelo Russell make big plays down the stretch. He had a huge Pity. corner three. Austin Reeves, Rui's been solid towards the end of this season. Spencer Dinwiddie played five minutes last night. It's, 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 it's crazy where one guy goes down, it's another guy's night, and they have to have this. It's going to take everybody in the series they got coming up, but this is an impressive win to go on the road in this kind of scenario. I think, what are they, 3-0 and now in playing games? Yeah. LeBron loves it. The he Lakers, loves it The now. Lakers, they look good. They looked really, really good. <laughs> Lou, uh, were you sure? I mean, there was a lot being made, and, and rightfully so. LeBron was out there taking charges mm -hmm. like it was nothing. <laughs> That's why the shooting percentages doesn't really matter. Yeah. It came down to a stops game. It was a low scoring game. They adjusted. I thought at first they were the Lakers were a jump shooting basketball team. They were living and dying by trying to make jump shots when Ooh, New Orleans was God. playing with they were playing with force. Zion was in the paint. Those guys were getting downhill and, and getting a lot of paint touches. And I think the, the Lakers made an adjustment <laughs> and they had to match they had to match force with force. And that's what worked for them. And and with that, you gotta put your body in front of a a big old moving train I mean. in Zion Williamson, and, he, and these guys were successful. In yeah, doing. they're just taking charges. They're just taking charges on Zion. Yeah, it's that's completely different. And, and, and Zion a, last did, night. You saw he did give a little turn there, <laughs> naturally, to try and <laughs> cover up a little bit. But that's the kind of stuff that the fact that he's doing that as everything he's done at his age, we always talk about it, but the fact that he's willing to do that in a play-in game, just a chance to get in the playoffs, right. shows where he, he, his head's at and his mindset is. Um, the Zion part of things, that was a little heartbreaking because this was the Zion Williamson that I think everybody has wanted to see. He had the 40 points. He was everywhere. Um, and then he leaves the game. But it, it, the timing of having this kind of a game for Zion, I think we're all rooting for him. Was this just perfect? And then, of course, the stupid injury comes in and ruins the dream. I mean, he looked great. 40, 11, and 15, or 5. He was efficient. He was explosive. And so I hope this is nothing serious with the injury. But he was dominant. And he, he, he kept them afloat <laughs> when, the, when the Lakers were going to run. He got to the basket. Uh, this is the type of performance that I love to see. His first real postseason big game. Uh, he was unbelievable. So I hope this is nothing serious because as good as the Kings looked last night, they need him for that game. They need him to keep their playoff hopes oh, yeah. alive. And now you know New Orleans and Sacramento, they're both thinking, all right, let's get this game because then we have a real shot at the Thunder. That's crazy that that's where we are. By the way, so afterwards, Willie Green said that the that he left with the soreness. What What is the latest? Can we expect to see him? The Pelicans believe that Zion Williamson came up lame on his, on his hamstring. He pulled a, a, a hamstring. Mm. There are tests coming today to see just how bad that's if, if, exactly what it is, what the severity is. But there's obvious concern. Anytime you have a hamstring, last season, Zion Williamson missed quite some time, several months with a hamstring strain on his opposite leg, his right leg. This year, it's the left hamstring that's impacted him. But this is the be that was the best game to me, oh. and I think to a lot of people, of Zion Williamson's career. You saw how he was attacking, how aggressive he was, and just the stakes of that game. I mean, it was a near playoff game that he had. And the energy that he played with, you could tell he was, he was really working himself to exhaustion in that fourth quarter playing really hard. Teammates felt it, coaches felt it, um, and I think they'll know more today just how bad that hamstring injury is. It's, um, it's devastating if they don't have him. I will say this, Pelicans, um, that they battle, obviously. The Kings, they're 5-0 and oh against them this season. Now, the Zion part, obviously, is up in the air. Chandler, do they, can they have a chance without him? They definitely they have a him? chance, but they need C.J. McCollum. He can't have nine can't. points. And, and the rotations also, I know Brandon Ingram just got back, but he barely played in the fourth quarter, wasn't in down the stretch. That was that was interesting to me. So I think with the uncertainty of Zion, I would obviously take the Kings right now. I don't know if the lines came out or anything like that. but mm. And they got a little bit from their bench last night, but they're going to have to have C.J. McCollum be better. He's been so good towards the end of the year. He's had these explosive games where he goes and can get you 30. He's got to do that. He's got to challenge Fox on the defense. Defensive end, um, and this, he's got to be big for them, especially if Zion's not 100%. I don't know, Lou. It's the two teams that probably got the least amount of respect all season long as they were fighting things out in the West. What do you think? Who, who you favor here? I, I'm favoring Sacramento. That was that was a dominant performance last night. They looked like they were clicking on all cylinders, and, and the Pelicans just have a little uncertainty going to this game. We don't know where Zion is. We don't have have a real reason why Brandon Ingram didn't play the last seven and a half minutes of that game. The Kings look like they got it figured out big time performance. They got to go down to New Orleans, though. They're a different basketball team when they play in Sacramento. That's going to be a key factor, but I still like them down there. How about this? On Sunday, 
the Pelicans could have clinched the six seed if they beat the Lakers. Now they could possibly lose oh. two home games and not even make the playoffs. Oh, Remember late in the year, they lost mm. the Spurs as well. <laughs> oh, there were some I bad mean, losses late in the that year for, would for be, New Orleans where they could have locked in a That spot. would be a brutal, brutal finish to a season where they looked really good all year long and now two, three huge losses towards the end. The West is so competitive and so deep. They could be done. And, 24 hours. By the way, shout out to Pelicans fans. There were not a lot of Lakers jerseys visible, but there were also a lot of empty seats. And I heard that tickets yesterday were going for like 12 bucks before the game for that. They, they Pelicans sell Lakers that. game. Pelicans for Lakers bucks? game. I guess because if it's a play-in, I don't know if that has less value. Because Caitlin Clark ain't out there playing, so they should have brought her. Tickets are uh, cheap. Should have got her in the house. The Lakers uh, get the rematch with the Nuggets, of course. And this was back on media day when Anthony Davis said that they cannot wait to play them again. Well, they've beaten them eight straight times, the Nuggets have. What kind of a chance are we giving them, Lou? <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> I don't know how badly I want to play a team that smacked me eight that times in a row. Good. Yeah, uh, this is something that he said before the season. They, were, they got swept. Yeah. Um, the great thing about basketball is you get a fresh opportunity in the playoffs. You got a fresh set of from four to seven games to have an opportunity <laughs> to prove yourselves. But, the, you know, the Nuggets have their number. This is a matchup problem for the Lakers. You know, usually the uh, AD can get in his bully bag. He can't really do that with the Joker. Guard play with D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves. Uh, Denver Nugget, they got they got guards that can match that with Reggie Jackson and, and, and Jamal Murray and how Michael Porter Jr. is playing. And they, they just can match them from from point A to point B, and this is going to be a tough one for the Lakers. This is to me where the, the value of Aaron Gordon is huge, too, because mm. you don't have to waste Jokic on guarding Anthony Davis, and Anthony Davis should have a mismatch. He's much bigger. He's much more you know, just physical than Aaron Gordon, but Aaron Gordon's such a versatile player where he can guard small guys, he can guard big guys. I look for him, that matchup to be really, really key early on because you don't want Jokic guarding Anthony Davis. You don't want him exhausting himself from both ends of the floor. You want to run your offense through him and let him dominate on that end and let him kind of float on the defensive end if you can He's not going to be able to do that guarding Anthony Davis. So Aaron Gordon has to take on this huge challenge and make sure that he cannot kind of offset AD. Shout out Aaron Gordon. How about these playoffs? We're getting the Western Conference How about in the it? first round. It's kind of fun. Nuts. I kind of love it. We get some more tonight. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Mark Cuban joins the show. When Run It Back returns. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up. The Dallas Mavericks and NBA champion. If you think you can do what you get better, yeah. Mark Cuban, check this out. I always do what you get better than you. Wow, with his own hype video coming in now. Longtime owner of the Dallas Mavs, of course. I, I not even an intro. Mark Cuban joins the show this morning. Uh, good morning, sir. And uh, we got to start with Chandler. Obviously, <laughs> spent some time in Dallas. Is your biggest fan of the team, the organization, always, always there. I need an embarrassing story. Oh, or, boy. Or seven. Oh my God, I don't even know where to start. I mean, we were just talking about him banging me so that like I had, we were in New York not long ago Whoa. and I was walking into a restaurant and like he had the door, he lets the door go and it's this big heavy door, smacks me right in the middle of the forehead. So now I'm walking to a restaurant, blood dripping down. <laughs> this did happen. This did, but this I'm did telling happen. the guy stopping, taking pictures of everybody, kissing babies, shaking hands. I'm like, well, I'm gonna go in, so I'm gonna grab the table. And I thought he was looking and the door just comes and just wags oh, him right Dude, right. He's literally Bam. holding it. You're face. not a good friend. I, it was an accident, I'm sorry. He was mad because he wanted to take pictures. You, did he? Um, did he sign his contract in a nightclub? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure in Orlando. Absolutely, we got pictures and everything. Uh, it was great. I mean, we always had fun. There was never not having fun with with CP. It, it was a great run. Cubes is the man. I will say this: ever since I retired, to you know, obviously everyone knows him, Shark Tank as well. Every investment I've ever done, I email it to him. The guy responds within oh. ten minutes. Usually, when he says no, I turn it down. When he <laughs> says yes, I invest a lot of money. So I appreciate that, Mark. You've always been very, very good to me. Besides and that, I know it's work, Chandler. Together. I know it's work because you can afford that haircut. I, I don't mean, know how much you spend on that, but get gets... your money back. <laughs> I'm getting ready for stagecoach. I've never been, so I'm, inter I'm, I'm challenging my white. You are the inner, dorkiest My inner white trash. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets ready for stagecoach? All right, Cubes, the Mavs, they play the Clippers in the first round. Series starts on Sunday. What worries you, if anything, the most about the Clippers? I mean, Kawhi, Kawhi, Kawhi. I mean, you know, it, this is a battle to see you know, how 
we can deal with Kawhi when he's playing defense and on both sides of the ball. And so we have to be able to contain him. And if we can do that, I like our chances. Hmm. Mark, obviously, Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, those are your two leaders. They've played at high level. Luka Doncic, MVP caliber, Kyrie Irving, 26 points a game, five rebounds a game, five assists a game. Is this what you envisioned when you made that trade for Kyrie Irving last season? Uh, has it exceeded your expectations? Yeah, it, it's what we envisioned, and now it has exceeded our, our expectations um, simply because they're playing together so well. You know, when you get uh, two superstars together, sometimes it's my turn, your turn, and that's just not the way they play together. They, they play together where they read the tempo of the game, they read the circumstances, and they get the ball to the, the guy who deserves it. And so when someone tries to trap Luca, you know, Kai's going right to the center of the court, you know, free throw line and playing four or three. It's just uh, their ability to just play play the right way together is everything. See, that's what happened when I signed in Dallas. You got two superstars with me nope. and Dirk, and that's why, that it, didn't, that's why it didn't pay it out, Cubes. <laughs> <No. laughs> you guys, you guys it was were, hard, CP. Uh, we so, had to try, though. So close. <laughs> Mark, you guys were 10 and 18 after trading for Kyrie last, last season. Was there ever a moment where you thought maybe we made a mistake and this wasn't going to work out? You never know, right? You know, it was more, you know, last season, you know, when when tie game here, Luca was hurt, and then we had to just quickly try to integrate the two together. They didn't really get a chance to know each other. There was, you know, you know how it goes, Lou Will. There's just lots of talk around. Everybody's trying to figure things out. So, yeah, I was concerned. But once we got to the summer, it was pretty obvious that this was going to work. Mark, there's obviously you, you're, you're on Twitter a lot. One of the things you are tweeting a, a lot about is MVP for Luca Doncic. I see you Absolutely. tweeting every single day about MVP. <laughs> Why do you think he should be the MVP over Shea Gilles Alexander, over Nikola Jokic, mm -hmm. any other candidate? No disrespect to those guys, but I mean, for Luca has just put up just generational numbers. I mean, you know, the, the, the numbers speak for themselves. When there's every statistical analysis you can put together, Luca shows up on top. And people talk about, okay, well, you know, we didn't have a great start to the mm -hmm. season, we finished great. Luca was everything to that. I mean, he integrated Kai. We got two new guys in. Um, we have a rookie center. He made everybody better. We have guys. I mean, two were two guys. Um, Dante Exum and Derek Jones Jr. were minimum signees, and he's made them just take their game to the very next level. We had a rookie center starting until we got Gaff, and he took him to the next level. So the MVP is somebody who makes everybody around you better. I mean, what Doc, what Luca has done with the guys around him has just been insane. And then, you know, up until we sat everybody those last two games, we were 16-2 and two in our last 18 games. I don't, I don't think there's any question that Luca has carried us, carried us all the way to this point. Yeah, I'm surprised, Chandler, you haven't been fighting that good fight. Well, I'm looking at your the Mark Followell, uh, Followell the, the MVP tweet. It's insane, some of these stats. The most points yeah. created, 57. The most points, rebounds, assists, and 71, 72. There are some crazy stats. I just think when you're talking about the Thunder and the Nuggets who've been battling for the number one seed, that's the only thing that's really hurting his case. If you guys were a top three seed, a home court advantage team, I think he's got a real chance. Yeah, but look at the last 20 games, CP. I mean, there's no doubt. Look, we need a... We, the the rocket or the nuggets are the defending champs right so you knew they had a good squad especially with Jamal um um healthy you knew the thunder had a good squad last year and they got better this year they're young yes but they have you know they have Chet they have a lot of great players around Jalen Williams probably one of the most underrated players in the NBA you know we, they weren't taking just guys that we just added to the roster, that they just added to the roster and going to that second seed. And even then, we're, what, four games, five games behind them? And that's after a midseason run. And, you know, the first time we played them, we, we or the second, second, second last time we played them, we destroyed them, and then we almost beat them without Luka. I mean, you know, they're a good team, but what Luka has done for us is just insane. I don't think there's any question. He deserves every MVP vote. And if you don't vote for him, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I got a vote. Luckily, we, we don't, don't have, have votes. Vote. Yeah, we're good. Oh, uh, <laughs> you don't? Know, okay. Well, and he's that, talking to you. He's talking to you. With that yeah. being <laughs> said, is this the best team Luka's ever had around him? Yeah, for sure. Not even close. You know, like Lucas was asked, what's the difference? And he just said Kyrie. Kyrie has learned that 
You know, he, Kyrie knows how to be the second best player on the team, having played with LeBron. He knows how to fit in. He knows how to make the best player even better and to, to know time and situation to, you know, where the ball goes and what he needs to do. And, I mean, that's just made Luka's job easier, but it's made the whole team better. And so, yeah, this is easily the best squad we've had around LD. I mean, obviously he's getting a statue at some point. The Dirk statue is huh. cool, but all of us fresh in our memories right now have – the Allen Iverson statue situation. The going, yeah, the Heisman Trophy that was. <laughs> um, uh, what goes into that? And also, is there going to be a, a sort of a, a rivalry between Dirk's statue and whatever Luca gets? Um, you know, I can't speak for Philly. I, I guess they had like a Hall of Fame row or something, <laughs> so everybody's with the same size. But, you know, Dirk was iconic for us, and, and Luca certainly is, is there as well. So, you know, I'll, I'll have to talk to both of them, get them in a room, and we'll decide whose statue will end up being bigger. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, there's no question LD has earned it. Well, Dirk's got a statue and a street. That's true. The street is so yep. God kind knows of what's That's coming key. for Luca. It's been on record many times. Dirk has even said it that he already thinks that Luca is a better player than him, and you agree with that. So is he the greatest Mav of all time already? It's gotta be, yeah, right? Lurk, yeah, Dirk is going to disagree with me, but he is. And the difference is, you know, <laughs> Luca can control all aspects of a game. With Dirk, you had to get him the ball in his spot. He's not going to bring the ball up and just attack. And I think that's the big difference. And, um, you know, there's no disrespect to either. They're both, you know, top 10, top 15 players of all time. And so I think the bigger question is, where will Luca rank all time? And I don't think there's any question. He has the ability to be top two, top three all time. Yeah, when did you know that? Like, when, when did you know when he first came? Was there a moment in practice, in the gym, his rookie season? When did you know he was going to be this elite of a player? Probably his rookie season um, when he hit that three-point three, um, three point shot against Portland with, like, half a second to go, which was just one of the most insane shots ever. And then you start realizing when it's win time, that's when Luka really turns on, and that's when he really has an impact on the game. And there's so few players that when it's come down to crunch time, you want the ball in their hands because you know they're going to be able to make a play. And we started seeing that his rookie year, and it was just as insane how he was able to do it. We were talking about in the first block, like, is Clay Thompson going to leave? How weird would that look? Is there a scenario that you can even imagine that Luke is not a Mav one day? I hope not. No I chance. mean, you never right. know, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly hope not. I hope he's here 26 years, you know? Um, he started younger than Dirk, and so hopefully he's, you know, and technology's better. Hopefully he's playing into his mid-40s and healthy and just <laughs> crushing it for us. Mark, how much has Dirk... Nowitzki meant to your franchise. What is something about Dirk that we don't know that the people don't know? Give us, give us something new here. Um, oh my God. I mean, Dirk's Mr. Tennis and paddleball or pickleball now, but oh um, he's just a good guy. I mean, you know, like <laughs> I dropped my son off the other day at one of his friend's houses and he said, Dad, and I'm like, dress, I'm not even dressed, right? I just have a pair of shorts and a tank top on. And he, and he texts me, he goes, Dirk's in here. You got to come and come on and hang out. And I'm like, you know, there's like all these other people all dressed up. I'm like, I can't, but that's just Dirk, man. He's just going to be everywhere in the neighborhood. He's hanging out with family, friends, everybody all the time. He's just a great guy. There's no airs. It's not like, hey, I'm Dirk, you know, you know, you got to treat me differently. He's just one of the guys. He's just hanging out. He doesn't care. He's just a good dude. Dirk played all 21 of his seasons with the Mavericks. You obviously never traded him, but did you ever come close? Did you, was there any wild Ooh. offers for Dirk? No, I mean, even when we thought we had traded for Kobe, we went, um, we didn't even consider including Dirk in that deal. And I told Dirk that, you know, and I thought we had that deal done um, until Mitch Kupchak changed Kobe's mind. But yeah, there's ne there was never a point where we were even close. And that never even came up. What, what has been one of the hardest player personnel decisions you've had to make since owning the Mavericks? You know, um, it's funny because I remember vividly sitting in our locker room with Chandler on the leg press machine talking about his next contract. And he was rehabbing from injury and having to go through the whole conversation with Chan that, um, look, you know, there's so much uncertainty about, you know, your injury. We can't give you what you want. Um, if you, you know, want to go for a lower number and then come back and prove it, we'll do it. But that was that was brutal. That was one of the most brutal conversations ever. Yeah.
<laughs> so, so, so Mark, uh, checks a, out. Concur. A few, checks out. A few months ago, uh, you sold uh, a, a majority ownership sale in the Dallas Mavericks. Um, why was it now the time to partner with the Adelsons? And has it been easy for you to have this dual role now where you're leading basketball operations? And your yeah, I mean, it's been easy because, I mean, look, you see me at the games, nothing's really changed from that side of it. I'm still all in and having fun, and I can still dogpile when Kyrie hits a game winner. You know, it's it's still a blast. But in terms of why, you know, I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. When it came to tech and media, I knew my stuff really well. I mean, Shams, you and I talk about media and the industry all the time. I, I know that stuff cold, but I don't think that's what's gonna drive growth, revenue growth um, in the NBA going forward. It's not to say that this next TV deal won't be good. I'm not involved in that, so I, I don't have any details, but I think it'll be great. But really, if you look to see where the revenue for a team is coming going forward, it's really real estate development, and if we can get um, resort gaming in the state of Texas, it, it'll be insane. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, Dallas becomes a, you know, a, a tourist destination, and I just don't have the skill set to be able to do that. And I didn't want to be in a position where it's like, okay, I'm going to have to pay a boatload of money to try to learn on the go to do this. Patrick Dumont, you know, he runs the Sands. He loves basketball. It, you know, it, it's been a great partnership with both with from both ends. I mean, I love working with them. But you know, the Sands Corporation is the world's best at building arenas, building casinos, and so it was just it's just been a great partnership. That's why I, I was I was thinking I always wanted to work in the NBA mark, but now me being a casino floor host in Dallas when once the casino <laughs> opens out right? there, right? Could you imagine? Like I think a, that's more my calling. Good God. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Could you imagine a Venetian in downtown Dallas? Oh, it would kill it. It would be well, unbelievable. It, it would just be insane. And I, you know, I don't know when it's going to happen, but I think it will happen. So, Mark, when the sale like <laughs> that happens, like how does that even tra how does that transaction work? Is it just straight wired to your account? Hold I, on, it's a rich people conversation. Yeah, like I, I see back. all the all the Twitter <laughs> stuff about the taxes. Did you really just have to wire yeah. two hundred seventy six million dollars in taxes? Like, how, what's the process yeah. like? Does it literally just hit your account one day and you're like, holy shit, I just got. <laughs> Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it's, me with, it's me with my phone going, come yeah. on, baby, come yeah. on. Wow. <laughs> Dinner's on you that night? So it literally just comes right through, and that's what? it. Right. And then, then like, yesterday, whatever it was, two days ago, it was like, okay, you know, and I'm, you know, and look, it's a good problem to have, and, and it's not the first time I've had to write big checks like that or send a lot of money to the IRS, but I might say, you know, I'm proud of it. I didn't say I loved it, but... Um, <laughs> It is what it is, and, and I'm glad I can contribute. Wow. Um, you and I, Mark, were both in the critically acclaimed Sharknado 3. Uh, ah. I, I played the limo driver driving Ian Ziering to the White House to meet with the president, played by you. Um, like no. We now know a lot more about what it takes to be president of the United States in these last several years. <laughs> Are you thinking maybe it's in your future? You know, you saw me in Sharknado 3. You know that if you give me a gun and it's my house to protect, I'll be there taking on every shark that comes out of the sky. That's going to be my platform, and that's how I'm run. When the sharks come, I'll be there. This is, I mean, it's the, worst, what, it's the worst best movie. You're you looking at it. your fucking vice president. Yo, no, no. Because I don't want in. No. Let, let me just tell you, filming that movie was a blast because, like, as you know, like, when they when people got killed, there it was all special effects after the fact, right? And so there was like Rick Fox. Well, so when people had to die, there was like Rick Fox laying on the floor doing doing this. Right? <laughs> it's so bad. It's the best worst. You have we do we need to do. It. By the way, just promise whatever you do politically and and however that plans out, this man can be nowhere near anything important. Oh, come on. Come on. No, CP, he's definitely going to be in my cabinet. Oh, God. Let's do Ambassador this. Ambassador some cabinet, beautiful right? Island. He's going to be in charge of the liquor cabinet. <laughs> the liquor cabinet. <laughs> I'm keeping stock, baby. Chandler, take us out. This is like, Oh, this well, is appreciate it. you, Mark. Good luck in the playoffs. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you at Shell Backs one of these nights, and I might even come to a game with you. Let's go, Woo! Mavs, baby. Let's hope. I'd, I'd love to see you. Thanks for having me on, guys. And Good to see you. Appreciate it. I will be right Thanks. back. <laughs> 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 Oh, he is back. Friend of the show. You know him from the league, Black Monday. Of course, he's got the podcast, How Did This Get Made? Paul Shear is, is here, and it's the perfect day to do this, Paul, because 
We just had Mark Cuban on the show. Obviously, I watched. Clips, maps. I know, I know. It feels a little weird, like we're pitting you guys against each other. But did he convince you at all that perhaps maybe you don't have a shot in the first round? Well, here's here's what I'll say. Everything that Mark said about his team can go for the Clippers, and we're a little bit higher in the seating than than the Mavs. So, Fair. yeah, I, I agree with him. All those things are true, and we have them in spades because we don't just have great players. We also have a great coaching staff. We're talking about, uh, you know, wow. a, a staff that has won chips, right? We have, like, we have a, a Ty Lu who is steering the ship, and look, I think the Mavs are a team to be respected. I think that Luka is somebody to be feared, but... I'm excited for, I think, one of the best playoff games we're going to get, or matches we're going to get this entire series. I was hyped for Luka against Kawhi, and now I'm hyped for Mark Cuban versus Paul Shearer. <laughs> That's the, the, game That's within the juiciest the game. headline of this series. I mean, they are yeah. hot. They, they got hot, the Mavs did. Is there a little piece of you that's just like, you know, the reputation the Clippers have, they... they Clippers be clipping, all that well, kind look, of stuff. Uh, first of all, I want to I want to say I want to say to Shams like thank you for not uh, having a close source to Kawhi like Chris Broussard uh, to come out and say that Kawhi's uh, knee is actually not even on his body anymore. I think there's so much rumors about whether or not Kawhi is playing. Like everyone's trying to read the tea leaves of whatever Ty is saying. But here's the thing. <laughs> Uh, I, I do believe that the Mavs for the first half of the season got really like dinged for having bad defense. I think that that's changed. But I also think that as much as the Mavs has changed, they got Kyrie. Look who we've got now. We've got Harden. We've got Russ. We have a whole different bench. I mean, you're talking about Norm Powell, who, I, Lou, I want to ask your opinion on this. As a former six man, you look at Norm. Do you feel like that guy is worthy of that, of, of that distinction this year? Yeah, Norm can play on both ends. You know, he's he's changed the, the identity of his career over the years from when he was in Toronto. They considered him a 3 and D guy. Now he's got to L.A. He can be a, a little bit more creative with the basketball, can show his versatility on, on the offensive end. So I think he's going to be key um, in this matchup, especially when you talk about so much star power. It's going to come down to role players. I think Norm and Russ coming off that bench is going to give them the balance they need. So I'm with you, hmm. Paul. I, I, got, I like the Clippers in this one. Yeah, there it is. And I like this. I like the, the, uh, the question mark of Kai Jones. I mean, like, is he going to play? We don't know. That's a big But ass here's the thing. When you lie. talk about... <laughs> He's not going to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, who knows? Who knows? We, we've seen stranger things in the bubble. Weirder things happen. Uh, but here's what I'll say. Um, there's so much talk about the Mavs and Kyrie and Luka, and the Clippers have, I think, a lot more people to talk about. So that's that's all I'll say about that. Will you be at the game on Sunday? Or do you, do you Sadly, like to be... I have to give up my tickets because I'm doing a dumb charity event oh. in North Carolina. <laughs> oh, stupid oh, charity. charity. It's for the kids. God, uh. what were you thinking? You don't schedule around the playoffs? I believe me, I know. It's been one of my great... I'm like, I'm trying to get my tickets there, so I'll be there on, I'll be there on Tuesday. Okay, that's fair. We'll take that. We'll take it. Paul, obviously the big concern is going to be stopping Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. Uh, you know, for you... Yeah. How, how do you feel about that? Like, do you, do you, do you really think yeah. the Clippers well, me, can stop them in the seven-game series? Um, how do you feel? Since, since uh, Kyrie, uh, like, you know, like the last couple of years, how many playoffs have Kyrie, like, went past the first round? Zero, right? Wow. I, think, I think once uh, since leaving, well, no. I think it. I think right, one, maybe to second one time I, since 2020. Okay, so either he goes off or we get a repeat. <laughs> I like just, your, I like your logic. I like, your, <laughs> I like your logic. That was so easy I, and simple. I think I know your answer here, but would you rather have the big three of Kawhi, yeah. PG, and James Harden oh, or on. the duo Stop of Luka it. and Kyrie? <laughs> uh, uh, you, come Can you on. imagine if he was like uh, Luka and Kyrie? <laughs> Duh. But really. Yeah, yeah, no, I got to take Luka and Kyrie. No, uh, I, look, I, I, and I, I truly believe, like, Luka is a transformative player. He's amazing. Kyrie is unbelievable as well. I just like the energy that's going on between uh, 2 on 3 and Harden, but especially Russ, too. I mean, you look at Russ, he fractured his hand. He comes back in. Mm. And I think really gives the team this little shot of juice that it needs. I think that that was what we've been missing for a long time. Uh, after Pat Bev left, we missed a little bit more of a personality, a, like a stronger voice. And I think that Russ is doing that and kind of running the whole bench like that. Paul, you were at the Love last that. regular season game uh, for the yes. Clippers at Crypto, and, and so was I. Yeah. Any part of you oh. will miss Crypto, or are you excited about the new arena? I'm so excited to get out of that arena. Damn. First of all, it's old, it's stinky, it's a hockey <laughs> arena. And second of all, like, 
I can finally like take one thing away from the two things that Lakers say, Laker fans say about the Clippers. Like, we're out of your house now. We're not your bother. You're like, so like, let's go to our new stadium, make it nice. Lou, it was awesome to see you there. And what a fun kind of way to celebrate. I love that Bomber bought everybody free what did you? What did you have? Did yeah. you run up a good tab? <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. I got some Sour Patch Kids. I brought my kids there. We got some water, some red vines. Yeah, we did it up. Wait, did you guys know, like, did he make an announcement before the game? Were people taking advantage? Or was it, hey, you went and got something and no, then you were told? You know, told? the weird thing about it, I was I was kind of walking around and I was getting things and yeah. everybody was just like, but I thought it was because it was me. Oh! So I was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> right, this is cool. I appreciate it. But I, I looked, didn't realize. I didn't think about that, actually. It <laughs> looked like when you went out like, into the concourse, it looked like like some disaster had happened because <laughs> every shelf was empty. That's crazy. I was crazy. like, wait, what? It was, I've never seen it like that. I was like, what happened here today? Is it just an afternoon game? And then you start to see the signs. Brilliant. That we all been chuck marked. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's Which that's feels brilliant. like a, a dirty thing, honestly. It, I don't want to be chuck marked. It sounded like something Chandler would say. Yeah, so for a minute marked. there, it was, yeah, we know. Yeah. Um, the other part of that game, which Boban, uh, a hero to <laughs> All. Love uh, Boban. Yeah, the, Bobby the, and Toby. The free classic throw. Duo. He's like the most loved player in the league. Doesn't matter what uniform he's wearing. He knows how to play the game. He misses the free throw on purpose. Chick fil A for everybody. Did you Ime, also get that? Ime what a Yudoka food day. Was furious. What <laughs> email was? He was? Did you get a sandwich? How does this work? I, I did. I, I Look, I have taken advantage of the two missed free throw Chick fil A's. <laughs> I did not get a chance to do it on Monday. But I will say, like, Boban is amazing. And if you ever have a little extra money and you want to get a great cameo, get Boban. Bon on your cameo. It's he <gasps> I, I've done one. it twice for my friends and wow. They <laughs> they deliver. They deliver. <laughs> He's cameos. He the a lot of a lot of great things. Boban is the best. Paul, Blake Griffin announced his retirement yesterday. Yes. I know he was one of your favorite clippers yeah. of all time. Uh, was he the best clipper ever? And what was your favorite memory of Blake? Here's what I'll say with Blake. He changed the course of the Clippers. When you look at the Clippers where they are now and when he came in. He was the, he ignited that whole entire change. Um, and so I, I believe that we should hang his rafter from the jerseys. Uh, sorry, we should hang his jersey from the rafter then <laughs> into it. We should also hang his jerseys from the rafter. <laughs> but uh, I think we should hang his jersey up. Uh, I don't know if he'll show up for it. I think we treated oh. him badly at the end. I, I don't know if that relationship with Bomber can be repaired. I think it sucks. I think they did him dirty. But I also feel like you can't just ignore what he did for us, which was really transform that entire team and bring A-plus talent there to become a team where people want to play and become a team that has a, a playoff, uh, not a playoff record, but like a winning season record, I think, for the last 10 years. By the way, I, I, he, they did play him really dirty. He was completely blindsided by that whole thing. But I think he's a Hall of Famer, too. I mean, the guy's six-time All-Star, five-time All-NBA. Uh, the things he did, obviously, with dunking and the dunk contest, that, yeah. that was so special. He was on top of the world for so long. So I personally, I'm with you. I think jersey retired, statue, and Hall of Fame in my eyes. Get the jersey up. Get that Kia that he jumped over <laughs> yeah, up Kia. in the rafters. Kia. And, yeah, give him a, give him a statue. We, we need some definite statues out there. You know, I feel like uh, I'm excited for this new era of Clippers. I hope we go into it with uh, some uh, exciting news or something under our belt. And by the way, he's also one of the few athletes, or famous, whatever, that's not actually supposed to be funny, who's funny. Oh, he's like, a, he's naturally oh, funny. And that, people what, fake laugh at athletes all the time. He, his are real. You know what's funny is I, we were talking, and when I, he was going to announce the retirement, I thought we were talking about, oh, like, all right, let's bring out a Kia and, <laughs> and jump over it like you're making a comeback and just fucking drill it, right? And then be like, nah, just kidding, I'm retired. I thought he was going to do something funny like yeah. that. No, nope. kind of I this know. Thing. I, I was bummed because I think that he was waiting for like a playoff pickup potentially. You know, look, everybody at the end of the year, they might be putting someone on the roster. It sucks to me that he had to retire, not rostered to a team, hmm. just because it really doesn't talk about his legacy. I think even when he was on the Celtics, he was doing interesting stuff. He's just been a player that I feel like uh, maybe in a couple of years will get the, the just deserve that he, he, that he I does. I mean, he went to Detroit and never complained. That's he also was all NBA one year in Detroit in 2019. He had a year. People Played forget about meniscus. that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a big, yeah. big deal. That's, a, that's quite And then the he change. came right to the Nets, right? And he started, like, dunking again. It was amazing. Like, he's had a very interesting long career. Uh, yeah. He, and, he, and I think also he's low-key. He doesn't talk, right? So he's not out there doing a podcast. He's not out there doing yeah. color commentary. So I think you can kind of 
forget about him a little bit, but he'll return. Is that? I mean, I'm wondering. Is that come? We'll, we'll get the inside scoop. We'll find that out. You yeah. were on the European tour for the podcast recently, which yes. is always tricky. And by the way, well timed because you did make it back for the playoffs. So oh, of course, I see what I had you did to. there. But how hard is it to keep up with the Clippers when you're when you're in a completely different time zone? Do you? I'm get in to? France. I'm in France up at 3 in the morning watching a, a 7 o'clock game. I, I watched every Clippers game like a maniac because of the NBA app. Thank God for that NBA app. I was able to stream it to whatever TV I was in. All my entire family sleeping around me. And uh, I, was so, I was so happy and so exhausted the next morning. And then, but you know, then you go to bed angry too, like when you have a, a loss. Like, I think we lost to the 76ers when I was over there. And I was like, God. God, God damn it. Like, and then you're trying to have to fall asleep at four in the morning. It's just not going to work. But then you're in France, and then everything's But then fine. you're in France, yeah, right? Yeah, you get a crepe, out. and it all goes away. By the way, you <laughs> pissed a lot of people off last time you were here with your Space Jam oh. blasphemy. So we might as well figure out what you thought about sure. the reboot with LeBron. <laughs> Did you like that one? I love Don Cheadle in it. Uh, it was amazing. He was great. Uh, here's the thing. I think that all kids love Casablanca, so I thought that was a really great choice for that movie to <laughs> highlight some of the, the great movies that kids are familiar with. You know, uh, when I think of Space Jam, I think of Game of Thrones parodies. Yes, uh, yes. But here's the thing about Space Jam 2. It's about a corporation uh, canceling and hiding shows and destroying entertainment <laughs> uh, coming from... I guess Max now, which was HBO Max. It was on a streamer that didn't even release it in the theater. So this movie is not necessarily a movie. It's just a warning of what was happening. It was like, hey, everybody, just so you know, we're not going to release a bunch of movies and we're going to pull all your favorite ones off. And here's LeBron. Enjoy it. <laughs> wow, it was that was really bad. That could have been the commercial. I don't no, know why they didn't really come feel. to you. Like, that was brilliantly <laughs> done. But Paul Shear, you want to check out the podcast, How Did This Get Made? And yes. you could pre order the book. Yes, Joyful Recollections of Trauma, wherever you get books, audiobooks, whatever you want to do, you can get it. Audiobooks are the way to go. Yeah, I recorded it all special, special things that you'll never get anywhere else uh, from that audiobook. I do so. like when the author does the reading. Then I'm back in. You have to. Paul Shear, Who best of luck. Read? Good luck to you and Lou with your Clippers. Mark Cuban. Um, and <laughs> yes, the evil you. enemy. I know. <laughs> we'll, I have we'll a feeling that this is going to be a rough seven yeah. games. I think it's going to be a rough seven games. You look at the point spread in Vegas, which I don't understand fully, but we're, it's going to be rough. We're going to. Can't wait. And I'm ready for a battle. I'm here for it. Round Give us seven. We'll All talk right, soon. Run it, Run it back. We'll be back. Run it up. Then run it back. Yeah, yeah. We got more must see hoops tonight. Uh, of course, Heat Sixers. This one, this should be good. So they split the season series, um, but t -t 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 the 76ers are coming in on an eight game winning streak. Who wins tonight? Lou. Sixers. Boom. That, that's it. <laughs> what are they, five and a half point favorites? Is it five and a half? Give me the heat. I'm taking the heat. This is their time. This is what they do what all regular their, season. Yeah, but it's different. They're different. It is. For some reason, it does it feel slightly different. No different this year. But Struth. I like the heat tonight. Joel is my guy. I think whoever loses this game, I think, is going to beat Chicago and Atlanta regardless. Well, yeah, I mean, we're not even... Why are you looking at me like that? No one's considering that game. I'm always looking at you like that. Yeah, we're waiting <laughs> for you to say Joel something asinine. My guy. Like, he's my guy. I got the heat. I that's it? Yeah, he, I, I, I think his, uh, is he fully healthy? He's not fully healthy, Shams, right? He's, he's, uh, I mean, he's banged up. As much as he can be. fully. I mean, he, he missed two months with that meniscus injury. I, I think Joel Embiid will be a go. I'll give him a 97%. Does that feel? Maybe 90. Does 90 he's feel 97, 97, it's going to be hard for the heat. If he's anything less than 90, which I think he is, give me the heat. If you're the Knicks, you what are you thinking? another fake bet? Do you care? A fake bet? Why is the other one fake? Because nobody's ever paid out. If I'm the Knicks, uh, I mean, I guess, I don't know. There's going to be a tough series for the Knicks, whoever By the way, wins this. Some real definitive analysis here at the end of <laughs> yeah. the show. And uh, I'm glad we could bring it to all of you. What a show. What a <laughs> we show. We don't know. Uh, but we will be back tomorrow. Enjoy the games. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up.